Hamilton Brown, a battle trout is just underway. In his infinite wisdom, the chairman has pitted Iron Chef Sakai, the grand master of all Iron Chefs, against Iron Chef Bobby Flay. Now, the extraordinary creations here in Kitchen Stadium do not exist in a vacuum. How will all of these savory delights play upon the palates of today's judges? Let's find out. Kevin Brosh, would you mind making the introductions, please? Not at all, Alton Kambenwa, everyone. First, he is a widely acclaimed chef who's worked everywhere, from a Little Caesars pizza joint to La Cote Basque. Chef Carrie Simon. She is the executive editor of one of the great journals for food lovers, Bon Appetit, Victoria Von Beel. Finally, he's a deliciously funny cultural observer who turns serious only during mealtime, Brian Unger. Thanks, Kevin. So let's get back to the action. This is a very critical time for the Iron Chefs. It may seem like a lot of busy work with the filleting and chopping, but their strategy is now in place, and they cannot falter one bit. They have five dishes, only 60 minutes to prepare them in, and you have to commit to a game plan and stick with it. Now it looks like Flay's team's making their own masa over there. They're uh, working that corn in a bowl down on the other end of the kitchen. Right. So definitely, they're definitely making tamales. It's just a matter of what they're going to end up putting inside of those. Kevin, can you get a look at what's going on in the walk over uh, on the uh, the Japanese side of the kitchen? Yeah, uh, sous chef Komodo was just uh, tasting the sauce in the walk. It's not ready yet, but he does seem rather pleased with how it's shaping up so far. Great. Well, I understand that the uh, the shark fin um, broth that is working right now has some some sugar in it, uh, a few other things, but they're being very secretive about what that uh, that base is. That may be a, a signature uh, uh, preparation of Sakai's, and he's just not willing to part with that information. And I, for one, don't blame him. Over on the American side, I can see the chef has added some cream, I, and from the looks of it, I would say heavy cream, to the uh, to the crayfish. So he's starting to tighten up that sauce. Still a mystery as to what he's going to be doing with that, whether he's going to puree that or let it stand on its own. Well, to give us a little more appreciation for today's battle is, uh, is a man that has gone up against uh, uh, Bobby Flay in the uh, kitchen before. Chef Morimoto uh, yeah. has uh, decided to give us a bit of his time, and we're honored to have him. Do you think that uh, Chef Sakai, because of where he is and who he's um, battling today, is changing his style at all? I saw the shark fin, so maybe he's going to do something like a Chinese style or more, Chinese more, more, style. more Asian type. It's going to come, I think. Now, you've been in the kitchen with Chef Sakai many times before your life. What, what drives him? What, what is it that keeps him going? Uh, he's very, pursuing what he's doing. Well, he has no open mind. If it's good, maybe he, he takes the Chinese way, Vietnam, you know, so Japanese. So he has the uh, Japanese technique, too. That's why I saw the uh, cutting fish very well. Yeah. So do you have any predictions on uh, who is going to prevail at the end of the day? I don't think. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> good luck to both of them, huh? Yeah. Very diplomatic. Yeah. Thanks for being with yeah. us, Chef Morimoto. Okay, we're looking back in Chef Flay's kitchen, and he's about to strain, uh, what is that, uh, appears to be a soup. Oh, uh, that's probably the soup he was making with coconut milk earlier, uh, the one flavored with habanero chilies and onions. I don't know how today's secret ingredient, the trout, is going to figure into this, but we'll be watching to see what Chef Flay has up his sleeve. Chef Sakai has pulled out a small charcoal grill from out of nowhere, and uh, he is uh, apparently uh, grilling his, his trout as we speak. The word from the floor is that Chef Sakai felt that the fish being so fresh is almost a bit too oily. So by searing it on the grill, he's actually eliminating some of the excess fat. And of course, it's going to add great flavor as well. So now Sakai's making a fine chop of that slightly grilled trout meat, and my guess is he's probably going to be using that in some sort of trout tartare. Okay, over on the American side, I see one of my favorite cooking metals coming into play. From out of his uh, back pocket or some other secret location, Chef Flay has pulled uh, several, looks like about four, maybe five, cast iron skillets. Uh, certainly good for fast, fast searing and high heat cooking. It's hard to believe that that fish was even down on the charcoal long enough to take in a lot of flavor, but I'm certain that he knows exactly, precisely what he's doing. Meanwhile, uh, Chef Flay continues, he's dressing his trout in the pan with uh, some kind of herb that I can't quite make up from here, and some butter. It's tarragon. He is putting tarragon, salt, pepper, and, uh, and a little fresh butter onto those fillets. Tarragon, of course, a very distinctive herb, very often found in, uh, in French cuisine. Has a, an unmistakable flavor and very strong fragrance. 30 minutes have elapsed. Seems like uh, Chef Sakai got a look at the clock and was maybe a little surprised at what he saw. Indeed, uh, half an hour has already gone by here in Kitchen Stadium. 
What well, you got, Kevin? Alton, he's got to be quite comfortable here in Kitchen Stadium because I've just done some research on Chef Sakai. He's been involved in no less than 26 battles involving fish and various seafood. So he's got to be pretty comfortable with today's secret ingredient. I am relatively certain that uh, during his time as an Iron Chef, Chef Sakai has never lost a battle involving fish. I'm going to do some quick checking on that, but I'm relatively certain the only uh, sea life battle he lost, I believe, was a, a battle involving lobster. But he has he's never been defeated with fish, so he, he definitely knows his way around the gill set. So Bobby Flay is going up against the winningest of all Iron Chefs. Before the competition began, we asked these chefs what they thought it would be like to face one another in battle. Well, you know, Sakai, I, I think of him as sort of the crown of the Iron Chefs. I mean, he is very focused. Uh, he's very well versed in, in classic French cuisine. He, he can adapt to anything. Whatever ingredient is put up there, he's going to have 500 things in his head that he wants to do. Bobby Flay. You know, I, I've seen his work twice in the past, and I believe the best strategy is to to be myself and uh, create my own dishes. I'll face him believing in my own victory. Uh, there's nothing else. So, Chef Lee is going to have to put something else in that pan. Uh, he's, he's making a mad dash for some more uh, cooking utensils. It's going to be interesting to see what he's going to do. Kevin, you were getting ready to tell me I was right about something, and Lord knows I don't want to miss right. that. He, he has never <laughs> lost a fish battle, and his nickname never. is, in fact, so, Fish the Guy. Fish the Guy. Yes. Well, Vish Sakai is working on what is clearly now a tartar of trout. Now, earlier, we saw trout in the fry later, but we haven't seen any of his dishes clearly defined as of yet. Meanwhile, Chef Flay is busily prepping his trout fillets for those cast iron pans. We have less than 30 minutes remaining in the competition, and when we return, maybe we'll find out what's going into that blender. Starting to homogenized milk, some cane sugar, and some trout into the blender. See, milk, sugar, and trout in a blender. Gosh darn it, that sounds like dessert to me. Chef Sakai is, is stuffing the tartare into the molds. Um, so I may have been wrong. I, I thought this was going to be uh, uh, someplace where the, uh, the custard went, but he is loading up those rings with, the, uh, with his tartare. To give us a little insight from uh, way, way up on the far side of Kitchen Stadium is, uh, is Kevin with our esteemed judges. What do they have to say up there, Kevin? Well, this may be the best view in the house. I think they're getting a good uh, view of the action here in Kitchen Stadium. Chef Curry Simon, what do you think of today's action so far? I think it's amazing. You know, you, you watch the first five minutes. They must have such an adrenaline rush to take that trout and go down and clean it. It's got to be like all their minds are going wild. So then to see them focus and watch how it kind of transitions into this sort of like everybody knows that they're coming down to the down finishing mark and they're like moving smoothly and there's hardly any communication now where there was a lot of like bantering before it's, it's got a good energy to it for sure moving over to uh, victoria von beale from uh, bon appetit magazine who are your eyes sort of moving to more are you staying with iron chef sakai or are you following the uh, the very handsome uh, iron chef bobby flay well you know bobby flay always you know always like to look at him but you know the chef sakai there's some interesting stuff going on down here so, both very interesting. Great, and uh, I'm going to move over here to Brian Unger, our cultural observer for the evening here in the judges' table. Brian, what, what have you been observing so far that's uh, cultural and interesting at the same time? Well, what I'm observing most is the smell. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to, to watch this on television and be hungry, but to be hungry and sitting up here, very difficult. But you only have about 25 minutes left until you get to taste the food. Thank you guys for being here. Speaking of observing smells, Chef Sakai's team has been working on a second soup. Now, that's not the shark fin broth. This is going to be a spicy soup. We've seen uh, shiitake mushrooms go in, uh, spicy pepper sauce, and Chinese cabbage. Word from my sources on the floor is that Chef Sakai's deep-fried trout may find a home in this soup as well. Ooh, it looks like we're making... Oh, they've gone to the ice cream maker over on the... Uh, on the sky side, so I'm going to assume that that mixture of sugar, uh, milk, and, and trout is maybe going right into that uh, that machine. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, over on the uh, on the fillet side, uh, they are building uh, tamales uh, over on one side of the kitchen, right? and uh, looks like they've got sweet potato going in there with some other ingredients. So they did add a little bit of lemon, a little citrus to brighten up that trout. We now know that that is golden trout ice cream indeed going in there, and I might. I might mention that that is going in raw, so that's going to be a, a raw trout ice cream, which I guess that makes that kind of a sushi gelato. I don't know. We'll see how, how that works. Okay, over on the American side, it looks like uh, Chef Flay's working some, some hominy there. He's, he's working on his grits, I think. I think he's working on, on those grits. He sure has beautiful hominy yeah. grits that he's got. Those are absolutely yeah, gorgeous. Honey. He's got a real corn theme going on here, uh, which makes a lot of sense with the trout because those are flavors that get along very, very well. 
Okay. Definitely going to have the, uh, the the corn flavor that's coming out of the tamales and the corn know. in the um, in the grits. I think they may be over on uh, Sakai's side of the equation. They might be a little nervous about this. You know, I don't remember there being an ice cream churn on the uh, on the original Iron Chef set, so they may not know for sure how this is going to turn out. It might be an interesting thing. Very right, Alton. Certainly, they've never made this kind of uh, ice cream before, so they are a bit nervous. Well, you know, considering that he's never lost a fish battle, I don't think he's got uh, you know anything to really be that nervous about, except for the fact that he's cooking across from one of the most innovative chefs that America's got, Bobby Flay, who is uh, cooking up an absolute storm. A bit of friendly rivalry here, uh, Alton. From from Iron Chef Sakai. We're looking at some fillets back on the hibachi grill. Now they're off, but uh, he was joking about not being a friend of Bobby Flay, at least not in Kitchen Stadium. He's taking this very seriously. Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure that uh, off on the street, they're best buds, but here, here on the playing field, keep on the game face. And right now we're getting some smiling and I think some friendly taunting. Ooh, uh, Chef Bobby Flay is sliding his, uh, his cast iron vessels into the oven, loaded up with that trout. Perfect vessels for the job. I understand that, uh, that Bobby Flay has made up a serious uh, rub, uh, a wet rub, in fact, uh, involving a bunch of different uh, chilies, dried chilies that are his favorite, beat down into a powder form that he's going to be rubbing right on the fish. And hopefully, uh, you know, he's going to go easy on that stuff because that is a lot of flavor packed in there. 15 minutes to go. Chef Flay giving, uh, giving a taste of what he's got working over here. A good chef tastes continuously through the cooking process. You got to taste, you got to feel, you got to look, you got to smell and use all your senses. That's what it is to be a good chef. And also over on Chef Flay's side, uh, there's that guacamole that was started earlier. And going into it, yes, that's the smoked trout, just as I had suspected. What a great combination that is going to be. Avocado and smoked trout. Chef Sakai is making some beautiful little garnishes out of what I think is watercress. It looks like watercress from my angle. There's a member of the uh, mustard family that grows only in uh, cool, clean, flowing water. Very distinctive uh, flavor. A little bit peppery, a little bit mustardy. Chef Flay is cracking open some coconut and uh, reclaiming some of the, uh, the water or milk coming out of that coconut. He just opened that right up with the back of a, of a large cleaver, very skillfully. I would have taken my hand clean off if I had tried that. I'm wondering if uh, Chef Lay is going to uh, keep those uh, coconut sides so that he can use them as bowls. You know, Chef Sakai's been cranking out these very small, delicate garnishes, which I understand is kind of a trademark of his. Alton, we have some caviar. Well, gosh darn it, caviar is never a bad thing. Chef Sakai is using what looks to be some uh, Ocetra caviar from the Ocetra um, uh, sturgeon, uh, one of the uh, varieties which is actually farm-raised here in the United States. Bobby uh, seems to be adding crab meat to his coconut milk and, uh, and shrimp stock mixture. I don't know quite what he's going to be doing with those. But this robust battle will continue when Iron Chef America returns. Find every Alton Brown and Battle Trout has less than 15 minutes remaining. Chef Sakai has been working methodically through an extraordinary trout tartare set in cucumber cups with American farm caviar while Chef Flay has been cracking coconuts and beautifully browning trout on the grill. And now, the plating has begun. Plating is all about the visual layout of the food. We eat with our eyes before we eat with our mouths, so it better look good if it's going to taste good. Oxakai's side, the tartare is complete, and it is uh, it's beautiful, so he's going to be moving on. Wow, some, some very nice uh, construction going on over on uh, Bobby Flay's side. I can't quite see what they plated. Uh, Might be blue corn tortilla. Oh, that's blue right. They use the, chips. They actually use blue corn tortilla that they basically julienned and laid right on there. Well, it certainly makes a stunning presentation. I uh, certainly wouldn't have thought of that myself. On Chef Sakai's side, I'm told that's a mixture of olive oil and parsley he's heating up, certain to be used in the plating of one of his dishes. We see that there's still uh, still a good bucket full of trout over on um, on uh, Chef Bobby Flay's side, and uh, they're definitely going to be using the uh, coconut careful, shells as, uh, as as bowls for, for what I assume is going to be their soup. Can't quite make out uh, Chef Flay's... Uh, oh, he's going to go straight. He has battered an entire trout uh, with that uh, blue cornmeal and put it right into uh, what smells to me to be peanut oil, uh, probably over in that wok. He's deep frying the entire fish. 
Alton? Yes, Kevin. We have a, a bit of news from uh, Iron Chef Sakai's side. Yes. It seems Bobby Flay may have cut just a bit of a break. It looks like a conversation between Iron Chef Sakai and one of the two chefs have, uh, they've forgotten one of their dishes. And with only about 12 minutes left, I don't know if they're going to be wow. able to get to it. Well, you know, this could just be a, a piece of subterfuge to uh, increase the value of the theater going on here. I'm sure we've seen uh, that before. Very difficult for me to believe that Chef Sakai forgot to do anything. That would be unprecedented. Uh, but hey, he is using uh, different sous chefs in there that he's used to, so maybe a little communication uh, went awry there. Bobby Flay's uh, cast iron skillet is out of the oven. The crawfish sauce is going over the trout right into the hot pan, and he's added the tarragon. Of course, that, there was some tarragon on the fish originally, so what he's done is he's getting two releases of that, uh, that herb. Has a seaweed kelp-like product gone into the fryer over there? We're just trying to source what uh, what it actually is, Alton. Okay. Because it looks it's like kombu kombu kelp. Kombu kelp. Kombu kelp. It is kombu, uh, which uh, we know is a, is a very very popular ingredient in Japanese cuisine. Suba, it's a it? big big leaf uh, that is often uh, sliced open uh, to release the uh, Suba, glutamic acid, which there? is uh, related to MSG that's inside of it. Yes. With it, the parsley and the olive oil. You know, the parsley and the olive oil. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> when you said olive oil, I thought kombu. I thought that's what you were going to do. <laughs> I knew cool. you did. Ten minutes. To go. go ahead. You got one fish out? Yeah, got How's one it look? Fish out of the fry? Just say yes. Really excited to be seeing that wok used uh, for these uh, whole deep fried fish. Trout is the perfect fish for that, uh, that application. Well, uh, the judges will be able to eat that skin and all. Wow, some incredible platings going over over on the Japanese side. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the seasoned oil that, uh, that we saw Chef Sakai's team blending up a while ago has gone down around um, his, his creation, which is just really, really stunning. Looks like, uh, is that some bamboo up on top of that? I can't, can't quite tell. Sakai has just garnished the fried trout with shia isha kobu, I think is how that's pronounced, which is basically a white kelp, which I, I personally have never seen before, and I'm sure I butchered the name, and I do apologize for that. Kevin, what do you have to Something tell us? very sweet happening here in Iron Chef Sakai's kitchen. We have some honey out, and we have a number of mixed berries that look like they might accompany the ice cream. I feel certain uh, that, that the, uh, the berries are going to go with the ice cream, maybe with the honey around the outside of the plate. If I was him, I would be worried about that, uh, the fact that that ice cream's got raw fish in it. <laughs> I might be uh, trying to hedge my bets. How many minutes, please? Beautiful. We're looking at uh, a little under seven minutes left in this competition. Six minutes and 45 seconds. Victoria, what do you think? Oh, yeah. We're, we're ready. We're ready up there. Uh, any dish from your angle look uh, like something you're particularly interested in getting your teeth into? I'm, I'm pretty curious about that ice cream. Pretty curious about the ice cream? Yeah. You know, I'm curious enough to let somebody else try it first. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you can get Carrie Simon, who's uh, pretty adventurous, to lock in. Or you know what? Give it to Brian. Brian will eat anything, okay. I'm told. Eat yeah. I will. I'll be your guinea pig on the ice cream. Uh, no but problem. Tamale's coming out of the, uh, the steamer in Chef Lee's kitchen, and he's just barehanding those things out of there. This is a man with asbestos for hands. And it looks like Bobby's going to use the cast iron skillets as his uh, presentation device. So he's actually going to be plating on them. Alton. Yes, Kevin. Watch Iron Chef Sakai as he peels this apple. This is unbelievable. That is not human. Human beings can't do that. It's one of his specialties, and I can see why. Uh, if I tried that, any apple would be red by the third swipe, uh, simply because I would have cut my thumb clean off. Don't try this at home, kids. Sakai is a professional. Uh, this man is a master with uh, garnishes. Beautiful presentation in that, uh, that goblet with the, uh, the berries. I'm still a little suspicious of the trout ice cream, but uh, he's making it look so beautiful, I might eat just about anything that came out of there. A nice little uh, flip of the wrist uh, turns the, uh, the something over in a pan over there on Bobby Play's side. Uh, he continues to build his soup presentation. So we've got very, very fragrant, hot, you know, heated uh, spices that are going to go in around that soup, which is very, very interesting because then as the people start to eat that soup, the fragrance is going to waft up and it's, it's going to change the, the overall flavor of the dish. Well, we're down to uh, three minutes, 30 seconds in the uh, competition here in Kitchen Stadium. And, uh, and, and I, for one, think this is uh, one of the more exciting competitions that I have ever seen. Uh, the amount of focus that this team's have. I had it in the chili. You pulled it out. It's right here. Three minutes. To go. Alton, some deep fried uh, skin of trout is actually being put into the ice cream, I guess, as a okay. decoration or garnish. Well, you know, if you're going to make trout ice cream, why not top it with fried trout skin, is what, what I always say. Of course, in sushi shops, uh, salmon skin is a, is a frequent contributor, and they are in the same family, trout and salmon. So, why not? And uh, Bobby is uh, bringing out his soup that he's getting ready to serve, the coconut soup coming out. Really fascinated by that combination of the trout with the coconut. 
What is uh, what is Chef Sakai getting ready to pour over there? I see a tiny bottle. Okay, thank you. It, it looks like it's a basil oil, Alton. Basil oil? It's grapeseed oil. I'm sorry. Grapeseed grape oil. oil. How much time? You're looking at uh, one minute, 30 seconds, Chef Clay. The gas streak did indeed go over uh, Bobby's fried fish, that whole fried fish, which is the perfect place for it to go. Very exciting dish. A lot of, a lot of smoke uh, being generated here. Well, it looks like Team Sakai is gift wrapping a pot, and I'm thinking that's a, a pot full of soup with Chinese cabbage. Wish I was going to be unwrapping it. And every available inch of counter space is being used here for tonight's trout battle. So the top is the uh, Spanish word for, for small dishes, uh, the, the small bites that are, that are served uh, you know, well before dinner time. Just a few seconds left now. Both chefs getting their trouts in a row, so to speak. Final touches, last looks. Chef Lay thinking it through, making his last move to decide what yeah, he's doing. Hey, there's a little shilpa from Sakai. You don't see that very often. He must be very pleased. Chef Lay is ladling his coconut soup with the grilled trout into the hollowed-out coconut shell. Clever presentation. That's going to be worth some points. There's the mystery gift from uh, Sakai's team. Two fierce competitors. What a battle. Two. One. Yeah. 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 And that concludes Battle yeah. Trout, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's all over except for the judging. So we'll uh, lick our lips and wait the verdict when Iron Chef America returns. Where the uh, battle has been fast and furious this evening. Our Iron Chefs, Sakai and Flay, have each prepared five dishes, each using today's secret ingredient, trout. Now, before the tasting and judging again, you need to know we have rules around here, okay? And to explain these rules, we're going to go to my good friend, Kevin Brown. A maximum of 10 points can be awarded for overall taste in the presentations. Up to five points can be awarded for plating and the designs of the plates. And finally, another five points can be awarded for the originality in the use of tonight's special ingredient, that would be trout. What was your approach once you realized what the secret ingredient was? Well, I have to say, Mr. Chairman, you gave us a very difficult task today. Uh, right. The trout really threw me right away, especially with the fact that they were alive. Uh, they were kicking, <laughs> and they were they were big. They were bigger than I, than I could imagine because I, I've never cooked a trout that big. I no. went to the ingredients that I that I know better than than others. We we stayed along the southwest of America, into the south a little bit, and then um, at the Mediterranean as well. May we begin the meal? Let's begin. Bon appetit. We're going to start today with uh, some tapas. We'll start with the top left. It's a, a, a flatbread that has uh, smoked trout and topped it with a thick Greek yogurt with dill, cucumbers, and garlic, and then some trout eggs. Right below you is a salad of trout and bacon and some greens, a little bit of uh, garlic. Uh, the one to the right of the salad is a, a trout tangerine almondine. And then on top, you can actually pick that one up if you want to. It's a plantain tostone. It's a crisp plantain fried twice with an avocado cocktail sauce. I love the guacamole here. And the citrus flavor is really, really delicious. This is a soup made with uh, coconut milk, ginger, garlic, onions. And I'm going to overflow the soup a little bit. When I went to Tokyo, the first time for Iron Chef, it was the first time I had gone to a sushi restaurant where they served the sake in the little boxes. And they were overflowing. And I said, you know, what is that all about? And I was told that it, it was about it was showing that sort of overflowing affection, so to speak. So I, I would want to do the same thing with the soup. Uh, who would expect, you know, this, this style of soup with the, the intense spiciness to have something like trout in it? It's, it's a wonderful, um, it's unexpected. Okay, this course is a Yucatan style trout taco. You'll also find the smoked trout guacamole. And then there's also a little uh, hot sauce on top, so be careful. <laughs> the smokiness of the, the trout and then the guacamole and then the sweetness from the mangoes and the cilantro, the crunchiness of the blue corn tortillas, it makes it work all, brings it all together. This is sort of my stop in Louisiana. I love grits. And these grits we actually cut ourselves. And we cook the trout fillets in a cast iron pan. And I think it should be served sort of southern style in a cast iron pan. I think the simplicity of this dish is really, really appealing. Mm. The flavors just shine through, and it's a great counterpoint to the other things that we've had so far. Okay, this dish 
we used rice flour and blue, and blue cornmeal to sort of crisp up the fish. And we just made a very, very, very light sort of sweet, sour, peppery sauce. The tamale is made with uh, fresh corn and uh, sweet potatoes. And there's a maple and pecan butter in there as well. The flavor of the trout just comes through so beautifully here. Cooking fish on the bone is so great, too. It stays so moist. Mm -hmm. It's really got keeps the integrity of it, I think, a lot. Tamale is really unique and very sweet and plays off the mildness of the trout. Thank you. It's really great. Chef Lake, we thank you for your magnificent meal. Thank you very much. Chef Sakai, how yes. would you describe today's approach to this battle? Today, well, I, I was surprised by the live trout, but I knew I would have a good time cooking, and um, I hope the judges will like what I've prepared. May we begin? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This is kind of like a trout custard. Um, it's kind of like a flan. You know, flan. It's got trout and soup stock, Chinese soup stock, and cream, and some eggs and foie gras. The trout is so delicate in this. It's a, it, it just points up the delicateness of the fish so beautifully. Why did you add shark fin? I have a good friend, uh, Iron Chef Chen. He was supposed to be here this time, but he couldn't make it. So shark fin is one of his signature ingredients, and this is to honor Chef Chen. The shark fin is really, really nice. I love the texture of it. It's like... Me too. So it's, it's almost like uh, sort of a noodle. This is trout tartare that's put inside cucumber and topped with caviar. Now make sure you put a little ginger sauce and a squeeze of lime when you eat this. Such an elegant dish. Such a, um, again, the delicacy mm. of the fish coming through so beautifully, just accented by that lime and mm. ginger. Yeah. Just, mm. Yeah, I'm not letting this one go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is a gift from me to honor the New Kitchen Stadium. It's also a gift for all of you. <laughs> this is uh, my own personal favorite soup that I make when I'm at home, and it's pretty spicy. So there's fried trout, shiitake mushrooms, Chinese cabbage, vinegar, and pepper. The trout here has a sort of crispiness in it that is, makes it different from what came before. It's very text, it has a lot of texture, even though it's in soup. Mm -hmm. We expect it to be slightly soggier. It's not, it's very crisp and holds up. It's really unique. Well, this is such good quality fresh fish. I, I cook the whole thing with the skin. With this fish, there's a kombu kelp, red bell pepper, olive oil, parsley sauce, and fried onions. Yet another exquisitely plated dish. Yeah, I know. It's such a simple fish to work with that you don't want to do too many things with it. So you have the kelp, there's a little crunchiness from the uh, vegetables. It works well, that's why I said it was like very Mediterranean feel. We're gonna finish with something that's sweet. You'll probably be surprised. This is trout ice cream. It's pureed with sugar and milk, and on top, that's the trout skin. It's very crispy, it's sort of like a cracker. <laughs> it's really subtle, but you can taste the trout in the ice cream, and the ice cream is not overly sweet, mm -hmm. so it's actually really very mild. Uh, and berries, I like it. It berries. works well with the berries and the bananas. And well, I can get uncle? you more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what we call extreme cuisine. <laughs> Chef Sakai, uh, we thank you for your incredible creations and your fearlessness in battle. Well, there you have it. This competition is now in the hands of our judges who are sequestered atop Kitchen Stadium. Our chairman will declare a victor when Iron Chef America I'm Alton Brown. Today, the masters, Iron Chefs Hiroyuki Sakai and Bobby Flay, have taken trout to new levels of culinary inventiveness. The judges have sampled their extraordinary creations, and they have voted. Now, to give us the decision of the judges, I give you the chairman. Sadly, only one chef can triumph in our battle. And so now I am prepared to hand down our judge's verdict as to the eternal question. Whose cuisine reigns supreme? And in the battle royale of Sakai and Flay, today's winning master is... Iron Chef, Bobby Flay!
There's a total of 60 possible points for the competition. Iron Chef Flay received 55 points, while Iron Chef Sakai scored 51. Uh, I have to say, you know, sitting over here and watching you work, I think there might have been a couple of times uh, during this competition where you doubted. Oh, there's, no, doubt? there's no, no question about it. I mean, first of all, you know, when you go against the Babe Ruth of Iron Chef, <laughs> you know, you're just lucky to be there, so to speak. Chef, congratulations on a, a job well done. Thank you. On behalf of the uh, chairman, the Iron Chefs, my colleague Kevin Brosh, and all the staff here at Kitchen Stadium, I'm Alton Brown, bidding you a good night. Thanks again. Welcome to Iron Chef America.